hey, kids, I need all the kids to go get their coloring pads and stuff like this. This is our last Sunday. We're going to do a drawing. So do you have your coloring pads, all this? At this time, we're going to show you some of the pictures that came in last week. We did, oh, we did Shagrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And, uh, and just so you know, kids, we got a lot of pictures. Are you putting them up there? Oh, yeah, and phenomenal. You guys did 10 times better than me. 10 times better than me. 10 times. Okay, so here we go. Kids, today we're dealing, and adults, just give me two minutes with the kids. Okay, so what happens is this. We have a guy, and his name is Daniel. Now, Daniel... He is just a really sharp guy, and he is, you know, really cool. Okay, so let's make Daniel really sharp, and he has a huge smile on his face. And okay, so now, there's this king named Darius, and Darius is the king, and Daniel is in his kingdom. Daniel is Jewish, and Darius is not. And they have these bad guys come to Darius and say, look, Let's throw people in the lion's den who do not worship you and your gods. And Darius says, cool idea. See, these guys were jealous of Daniel and his success in the kingdom because God was helping Daniel with dreams, visions, so forth. So what happened is, and watch this, this is so unbelievable. Daniel, uh, he, well, I'll read the scripture later. So what we need to do, kids, is we need to draw Darius. Now, Darius is really, okay, and he is, and he's got, oh, yeah, like, oh, yeah. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring him down like this and make his ear come out like this, and we'll bring him down like, okay, watch this. Okay, now, we have to add something. I'm sorry. I don't have them with me. It's on the wrong side. So, kids, what he, because he's the king, we add a crown. Okay? Okay, and we always put a few diamonds in it in order to make him look. So that's Darius, and he is just ugly. Just ugly. Okay, so while you kids are doing that, let me read the scripture to the adults, and this will be... Now, Daniel learned, and this is uh, in Daniel chapter 6. Daniel learned that the decree had been published. He went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened towards Jerusalem. Three times a day, he got down on his knees and prayed. Now, why did he get down on his knees? To show humility, respect, and reverence, okay? And he prayed, giving thanks to his God, just as he'd done before. Now, notice what it says. It says, giving thanks to his God. He knows that they're out to kill him. He knows that his days are numbered, lion's den is coming, but what does he do? Instead of just crying out to God, oh, yeah, I'm going to be eaten by the lion. Ah! By the way, kids, the third picture is the lion. You need to do the lion. Okay, watch. He, what does he do in his prayer? Give thanks to God. And then it says, just as he's done before. So this is not new. You know what gets me is people who go into crisis situations and they start to pray and fast when they're in a crisis situation, but God has never heard from them before. So what happens is Daniel's been doing this all the time. He's not changing his routine. Now watch what it says. Then these men went as a group and found Daniel praying and asked God to help, and asking God to help him. Okay, watch what it then. Daniel is taken and thrown into the lion's den. Now the lion's den is a pit, and the fact is that the king would have these lions, not only to kill people and execute them, but he would have these lions as pets. Okay, I'm sorry to tell you this. He would have captured them as a great capture. He would have had them as pets. Okay, so watch verse 19, Daniel 6. At the first light of dawn, the king got up and hurried to the lion's den. When he had come near the den, he called out to Daniel in an anguished voice, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to rescue you from the lions? Daniel answered, may the king live forever. May... My God sent his angel, and he shut the mouths of the lions. 
they have not hurt me because I was found innocent in his sight, nor have I ever done anything wrong before you, your majesty. And the king was overjoyed and gave orders to lift Daniel out of the lion's den. And when Daniel was lifted out of the den, no wound was found on him because he had what? Trusted in his God. Oh. Point number one. Are you ready? The application for today is so cool. The foundation in God. I have people who continue to pray Mickey Mouse prayers. And what I mean by this is the, the prayers are shallow. They're, they're, they're just repetitious. They're, they're not from the heart. Yet Daniel had a foundation in God where he was in God's word and he was in prayer. Now somebody says it doesn't say he was in God's word. Yes, but the fact is, is according to Jewish history, we know men and women who prayed always were in the word during prayer. They always had times of fasting. They always had time prayer. And Daniel shows us the foundation is not to pray just once a day, but three times a day. The beautiful part about this, and I love this, is that you and I must come to a place in our lives where we have a foundation. See, the foundation is the key. Yesterday we were at the family cottage opening it up. It was so nice to be there. And of course we weren't allowed to go anywhere else, but we were there opening up. On our cottage we have this addition that my wife and a friend of mine who was in his 70s helped build. We knew nothing about the foundation, but my friend in the 70s had built a lot of houses. And, and when we looked at the addition yesterday, it was still standing perfect condition. Why? Because when we built the foundation, we did what the expert carpenter, construction worker told us to do. We put rebar in, we put stone, we, we did it exactly the way it was. And because of that, the addition is still standing. Here, here's, the, here's the sermon, are you ready? Do you want to build your foundation during the storm? Or are you building your foundation now in God? See, the point is this, prayer, Bible, church, devotions, they're all part of the foundation. Tithing, part of the foundation. Giving, part of the foundation. Witnessing, part of the foundation. The second one is this, and I love this, is this faith in God. Now, Faith in God is absolutely incredible because the fact is that when we have faith in God, the Bible says we can move mountains. What's the last part of the scripture? Daniel trusted in his God. And, and, and one of the components of faith is trust. One of the components of faith is also faithfulness where we are being able to, through hard times, be faithful to the foundation we have in God. Now, let me share this with you. I am so thrilled with this passage of Scripture, and I'm sure every Christian has read it more than once. Because the Scripture points to the faithfulness, and that shows his faith three times a day, as he has done previously. So the point is, he didn't start this faith, but he had it. Now, for some of you who are brand new in Jesus Christ, you have to start your faith. Yes, there is a starting point. And you're not behind, you need to just start it. But in your faith, you need to have faithfulness, you need to have trusting, you need to have all the attributes the Bible teaches about faith. Hebrews eleven six says, it is impossible to please God without faith. Now, let me take this to you, and I, I want to just show it to you. Daniel is a man just like you and I, but the problem with him is he has been taken into slavery. He is not free man. He is, has to do what this king wants. He has been taken in, if you go back to Daniel chapter 1, the craziest part about this is He's still faithful to God, and God wants him to be faithful to the king. So he says to the king when he's pulling out the line, I haven't done anything wrong. I've never gone, come against you at all. A lot of us today, we are militant 
against the government, against politicians, stuff like this. We need to be faithful to God and find out, God, what do you want me to do? I mean, when was the last time you prayed for the prime minister? When was the last time you prayed for the premier? When was the last time you prayed for the mayor? We have to come to a place in our Christianity where don't tell me you have faith. Let your lifestyle show it. Daniel showed it. Foundation. Faith in God. Okay, you ready? This one is a little weird. Fear in God. Now, fear in anything else in God other than God is wrong. Fear in God is not where I am so scared of him that I cannot approach him. Fear in God is where I have such fear in God that I don't want to do something that's wrong, sinful. My fear in God, let, let me give you a healthy illustration of this, and I love this illustration. I had a phenomenal father. I mean, my father was... Um, I'm six foot two, my father was five foot eight. My father weighed 245 pounds. He looked like the Pillsbury Doughboy. I'm not joking. But growing up, I had a healthy fear of my father. Now, my father never beat me, my father never spanked me, my father, but the point is this, I knew that I needed to do what my father wanted me to do. And if I, caught not, and I, if I got caught not doing it, I knew I would pay the price. It didn't mean that I was scared of my father, it didn't mean that I was um, angry with my father, he wasn't abusive, but I had a healthy fear. And what Daniel did was he had a healthy fear, not of the king, not of people, not of the lions, but he had a healthy fear in God. The healthy fear in God is when you take your eyes off the lion, the king, and everybody else, and you put your healthy fear by looking at God. For some of you, you're going through the hardest time in your entire life. I want you to know something. God loves you. And your fear should not be, am I going under or am I going to get sick? But your healthy fear should be, is my eyes on the Savior, Jesus? Is my heart with Father God? Am I walking in the Holy Spirit? So we have the foundation, we have the fear, and we have the faith. But the third one is this future in God. Daniel's future did not rest on King Darius. Daniel's future did not rest on, oh, I have to do all these stuff so I get to be 95 years of age. No, his future in God, now watch this. His future in God was the same thing as his faith in God, his fear in God, his foundation in God. God, if you want the lions to eat me, okay. If you want to spare my life, okay. But here's the truth. My future is in your hands. I have walked like this for a number of years, although I'm not 100% perfect in this. But if somebody was going to write what was his verse on his tombstone, my verse probably on my tombstone would be Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. For some of you who are unemployed, some of you who are sick, some of you who are going through a hard time, listen to me. Trust in the Lord. Have your foundation, your faith, your fear in God. And then your future is in God. Many a times, hell has tried to steal or has stolen it, but I did get it back. 
Hell has tried to make my eyes with faith and foundation and fear go other places and my future. Oh, you have to kiss up to this person to have a future. The fact is this, I have learned that I don't need to kiss up to somebody else. I need to hold on and hug God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. And guess what? He will direct your path. So here's, here's the craziest part of today's sermon. Do you have a foundation in God? Do you have a future in God? Do you have fear in God? Do you have faith in God? Now, for some of you who are brand new Christians or you are just trying to figure out if you should be in Christ or not, where did the magic marker go? Let me talk to you about this, okay? Jesus did not come to be a religion, but Jesus came to be a relationship. And, and what we need to do is we need to have this incredible thing foundation. And we need to have faith. And we need to have fear in God. Oh, and we need to also have this future in God. But let me take you into this. When Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and life, he wanted us to be able to have him as the way, truth, and life. So how do I, as a brand new Christian or a person who doesn't know Christ, have the foundation? Are you ready? Accept him into your life. Accept him into your life and let him be Lord of your life. That starts the foundation. This is where you ask Jesus to forgive you. This is where you give up your life and you take on his. This is where you pray by faith. So we have people who want to pray with you. We have people who want to talk to you. We have people who will send you Christian information free. It's not we want you to join church on Queen Street. We would love you to attend this church. That's not the issue. But we want you to have a foundation in Christ. Now, let me take you a second one. Are you ready? Faith in Christ. Somebody says to me, how do I get a deeper faith in Christ? Well, the Bible says by reading his word, by prayer, by having Christians help encourage you and pour into your life. Now, let me take you to the third one, fear. This is the one that gets me. A healthy fear in God, you need the Holy Spirit to help you. It's not a fear where I'm scared, but a healthy fear in God, just like my illustration of my earthly father. The Holy Spirit can help you with, and as you read the Bible, the Bible will teach you about healthy fear. But let me take you to the last one, future. And I'm not joking when I say this. All of hell wants to rob you of your future. My future does not rest on who I am or what I own or how healthy I am or if I have a lot of friends or what I'm wearing. I, I met a lady a, a long time ago and, and her concern was, did you see my shoes? I want the ladies who are watching to know this. 99% of all men don't look at women's shoes Okay, therefore, when you buy these shoes, you're only buying them for the other ladies, and very little, little ladies look at your shoes either. See, my future needs to rest in God. I love that song, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. My illustration for you today is this, and I love this. Are you ready? Let me just write this down because I love this. Billy Graham.
I think I spelt it wrong. Billy Graham is my hero. Billy Graham is my hero. Do you know that Billy Graham, when he was alive, he's been gone for two years now, had the opportunity to pray for all the presidents. Matter of fact, he prayed for a lot of the presidents at their inaugural event. But he had the opportunity, even President Obama flew down to his house so that Billy Graham could pray with him. Billy Graham was in a political machine, yet he was not political. Billy Graham was in the media machine, yet he was not a man of media. If you ever studied the life of Billy Graham, you knew that his foundation, his future, his fear, and his faith was in God. It didn't matter what interview, it didn't matter how they were trying to attack him. He had faith, future, fear, and foundation in God. Matter of fact, he spoke at TED, which is an a intellectual conference, and when he spoke at TED, he brought God into the whole speech. And it's one of the most um, sought-after speech on the internet today, Billy Graham speaking at TED. See, Billy Graham knew all this for one reason. He was a man of prayer. He was a man in the Word. He wasn't fluff. I mean, he always was praying. He was always reading God's Word. He was always, well, when he wasn't doing a crusade, he was at his church. Here's what I'm trying to say to you. We need a foundation in God. We need a future in God. We need faith in God. Oh, we need fear in God. Billy Graham is my hero because he has shown me a modern day version of this. Well, before we end today, I want to pray for you. And then I'm going to ask them to lead us in a song, I'm No Longer a Slave to Fear. And what I'm asking is, as I pray for you, that you would give your, if you don't know Christ, you would give your life to Christ. But if you are a Christian, and your foundation is shallow, you ask God to make it stronger. If your faith is not strong, you ask God to make it stronger. If your fear in God isn't healthy, you make it to get healthier. And also I ask you to let him be your future. Now, this is what I want you to do. I want you to realize as I pray this for you, I'm praying this for myself also. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I humble myself because I need you so bad. Thank you for the foundation we have in you, where the Holy Spirit through prayer can take us deeper and deeper. So Lord, right now for some of us who don't have a strong foundation, give us a stronger foundation. You can never have too strong of a foundation. We pray that we would be like Daniel and Billy Graham, the faith, the fear we have in you. Daniel and Billy Graham never feared man or woman, but they always had a healthy faith in you and fear in you. Daniel shows us that the future is yours, Lord. So we rest in you. Thank you, Jesus. Bless us now. Amen. Hey, kids, email, text those pictures into me. I want to see Daniel, King Darius, and also draw a line because I can't. Oh, Wednesday, 7 p.m., drive-in service, 45 minutes. Oh, no washrooms. Love you. Please give online. 
I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child. Sing that one more time. I'm no longer. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. And I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Thanks for joining our live stream service today. Don't forget, you can join us on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. for our live stream prayer meeting and every week on Sunday at 9.30 and 11, 11 a.m. for our live stream services. We've made giving easy. So how do I give to the church? Simple. Just text the word give to 416-255-0141. Then follow the secure link that comes to you, which will take you to our safe, secure giving portal. There, you can designate your fund, put in the amount, and choose if you want to make it a weekly or monthly recurring gift. Don't forget, you can also go online at thechurch.to slash donate, where you can give on our website through a safe and secure portal. And of course, visit our website where you'll find updates every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday for adults, kids, tweens, and youth. Well, that's it for this week, so make sure you like, share, and subscribe to help us out. We look forward to seeing you again next week at Church on the Queensway.